Hello and welcome back to our Let's Level Design series. Today what we're going to be doing is commonly referred to as gray boxing. And what that is, is blocking out the geometry in your level. So what we're going to do is build the floors and the walls and ceilings, things like that. So to start, you need to have your paper map open as a guide for when we're gray boxing the level. And then the next thing you need to do is open up Unreal 4. So either click your Epic Games Launcher icon if you have it saved to your desktop, to your toolbar, or if you have to go to Start and then open it there. Once the Epic Games Launcher opens up, what you're going to do is make sure you have Unreal Tournament installed. And if you already have it installed, make sure it's updated. If you're not sure if it's updated or not, it'll say Update instead of Launch right here on this button. And just click it if it needs to be updated and wait. Otherwise, if you're good to go, you just click launch. And once Unreal Tournament opens up or the Unreal Editor 4 opens up, this is the first screen that will pop up if you're on the Unreal Tournament side of the editor. If you're using strictly the Unreal Editor side of the engine, it'll have a similar setup, but you won't have as a fleshed out example map as what's shown here or the example map will look a little different than what's shown here based on what template you chose but all of these windows will still be the same and as you can see Unreal Engine 4 is kind of a perfect combination of what UDK and Unreal 3 brought in the last generation combined with Unity as you can see the content browser down here at the bottom of the screen and we have our world outliner up here at the top right which is similar to the hierarchy in unity if you're familiar with unity and then below the world outliner we have the details and this is just the object properties if you're familiar with udk or unreal 3. and then the modes are over on this left side and then we still have this top toolbar, very similar to UDK and Unreal 3, except it's more streamlined. It's a lot easier to share and get to the marketplace, get to the content browser, open up the blueprints, matinee, as well as actually building the level. So you can compare this to what happens when you open up Unreal 3 or UDK. When you open up UDK for the first time, you'll get this screen. And as you can see, a perspective view is maximized and you can hover around inside here we still have the modes we have our brushes we have our additive subtractive and intersection tools we also have our volumes and our different selections down at the bottom the content browser is its own separate window that includes all the content as well as getting to the actor classes levels your scenes your layers and documentation and then the top toolbar is very similar to unreal 4 with the exception of instead of kismet now we have blueprints though they're pretty similar in how it functions but we'll get into that later the big thing i want to talk about before we get started with gray boxing and blocking out all the geometry in our level is the difference between unreal 3 and unreal 4 because while everything else is pretty much the same, how you create geometry is a little bit different. And if it's your first time switching over from Unreal 3 to 4, then it might catch you off guard. Or if it's the first time you're creating a level, then this is an essential skill you need to understand, learn, and have. So in UDK, you have the BSP brush, which is this kind of reddish pink uh, Right now it's a box, but you can change it to cone or stairs or cylinder. In order to edit the dimensions of it, you can right click on your brush and that opens up the properties for it. And you can set the X, Y, Z values as well as the thickness. You can change the group name if you want. You can also have it hollow or tessellated. So for right now, let's just edit a couple of these numbers. So let's make the Z 500. Move this up, and then you would either add or subtract it. But since we have a block here, I'm going to add. So now this block and its inner level it looks beautiful. 
and you can move this brush away and you can continue to add them. Another way you can edit the geometry is up here on the modes. You can click on geometry mode. And then with edit selected, you can select the sides or the vertices. And then you can have a custom little geometric shape. You can move the brush out of there and then reset it. Then I have these two pieces of geometry, they're blocked to level. Those are the two ways you can edit geometry in Unreal 3. In Unreal 4, I'm gonna go ahead and open up File New Level and just go to default to show this so you're not distracted by the, the default level objects. What you do is you make sure you're on the place mode and under place mode they have recently placed items or objects basic objects that you can put into your level also light objects visual effects our BSP which we're going to come right back to because these are geometric shapes we're going to be blocking into our level in order to gray box it there's also different volumes we can add in and then you can also go down to all classes and browse that way. Now with the new release of Unreal 4, they streamlined a lot of the tools inside of the engine, which is super awesome. For instance, the volumes, you can just click and drag and then throw in a blocking volume. Whereas in Unreal 3, it takes a little bit more time if we're not really used to it. But for now, we're going to go back to our BSP because that's what we're going to be using most today. Now in order to place geometry in the level using the BSP, you click whichever piece of geometry or BSP brush that you want. So for instance, I just want a box in level, I left click, and then you can drag it into your level, and then let go of left click wherever you want the block to be placed. And now you have a block in your level. However, you'll notice that if we move our BSP brush that's in our level now, and then we build the geometry, the block moves. So what this means for you as a developer is that you need to place a new BSP brush into level for each a geometric object that you're making. So that's a little different than in Unreal 3 where we had one designated BSP brush which we you can drag around the level and then add in or subtract do whatever you want with the geometry using this one BSP brush. So if we wanted two blocks we'd have to drag in another box and then in order to edit we have our editing geometry mode which is at the end of this top toolbar. Make sure it's on edit. And then same thing, you can click the sides, click the vertices, hold down control to select multiple vertices. And then you can edit it that way. So now we have our two different blocks. So that'll take a little getting used to if you're new to Unreal 4 and you're coming from Unreal 3 is placing in those multiple BSP brushes and that applies to all the different types whether you do subtractive or additive. And then also in the modes we have our paint landscape and foliage modes which again are carried over from Unreal 3. Everything's still here and if you want to edit your BSP by changing the dimensions that's under details over here on the left. You can also change the location, you can change the brush type, you can change the brush shape, and then all the dimensions. You can also change how thick the walls are when it's hollow. You can make it hollow or tessellated. You can even add in the surface materials for texturing directly onto here. Similar to 
what it looks like in the UI for Unity. You can also edit the geometry properties, which again, come into play with textures and things like that. So instead of having a separate properties window that pops up, it's all under details over here on the right. And then just to show you before we get started in the thick of things, and you can place a subtractive BSP brush into your level by clicking on subtract down here in the bottom in the modes window. And then again, clicking and dragging the cube in or whatever shape you want. And then you can just place it into the level. This would be 100 by whatever. Now we build geometry. And we have a subjective, we have a subtractive chunk taken out of that box. And it looks beautiful. So those are the basics of placing BSP inside of Unreal 4. And without further ado, what we're going to be doing is blocking out the geometry for our DM temple map. I'm just going to be using the method I just showed you really fast in order to do all of that. So sit back and enjoy. So to get started, what I did here was create a new BSP box. And I changed the height to 180 because in Unreal Engine 4, the default character height is 180 Unreal units, and one Unreal unit is equal to one centimeter. And back in the days of the EDK, the character height was 96 EU, so it has changed a little bit. But I just have that cube as a reference, and I move it around the whole time. I'm gray boxing to make sure that archways and staircases and doorways feel good. But I also play test, which you'll see in a little bit. Then after that, what I did was create multiple staircases in order to get the scale right inside of the level. Because I created this very large hollowed out box with the BSP, which is going to contain our entire level inside of it. Since I don't want atmospheric lighting or the sky box to be seen in our level because it all takes place inside of this Egyptian temple. And then after that, since I'm we're, we're going to be working inside of this box and the BSP blocks the the world lighting. What I did was just for the purposes of gray boxing and building out the level, I duplicated a bunch of light points and you notice that several of them have a red X on them because they're intersecting with other light sources which throws an error inside of the Unreal Engine. But I just have it so we have some production lighting so I can see what we're actually doing. And then from there, I go back and forth a lot between our paper map and Unreal 4 to make sure the scale feels right. And what I could have done, what you can do, is create the actual dimensions on your paper map to make it go a little faster and smoother. Usually, I just go based off of feel and how it looks inside of the editor. And when you are inside Unreal Engine, uh, large multiples of 10 seem to build out and feel really good inside the engine. It's kind of hard to explain, but once you use it for a while, it just things start to feel more natural and right. And so you can base things around that. And as I'm building out these staircases for this one corner section of our main floor and our kind of top floor and, and subtractive main floor, I keep going back and forth between whether I want the staircases to be single staircases or making them double because once I get into the playtesting session of this to see if things feel right, it does feel kind of smushed in, which is r realistic for what a building would like in real life, especially an ancient building. For gameplay, it might not work quite right, so I may end up changing that and I'm going to have to think about it for a while. But as you can see, I just all you do is place in BSP and based on what you created in your paper map, 
And that's all you're doing is translating that BSP from your paper map into the editor or engine to create an actual geometric level. The reason why this is called gray boxing is because, as you can tell, there's no textures on any of the BSP and they look gray right now. So that's where the name comes from. And it's important to draw your whole level because this is the early point of your level. And even as I create this towards the end, I start changing a few things very slightly just because of how it turns out once it's in the engine and it doesn't look as pretty as it does on paper. And a lot of things will change over the course of this tutorial series at the level, I'm sure. And it's just based on what's best for the gameplay. And when you have your gray box level in Unreal Engine, or in this case, the Unreal Tournament 4, we already have built-in gameplay, which is a great thing for an editor to have, which is one of the main reasons I prefer Unreal over Unity, because Unity, you have to create the entire game yourself before you can actually test out your level. In Unreal, you have Unreal Tournament that comes with it, so it makes it really easy to test out your level to see if it's any fun, and it makes it a lot easier to, to level design. So that's one of the major strengths of Unreal 4, just that ability to see if your game is fun. Because if your game is fun when it's just gray box, then you're in really good shape, because you can always add in beautiful graphics, but at the simplest point, at the minimum viable product when it's gray boxed because it should have the mechanics in it. For instance, we have our first person shooter mechanics. You have first person camera angle and you have the weapons. I could load in bots into this and then, and then fight them. And if it feels fun at that point before there's any graph, like any beautiful textures, you can even place in blocks that represent static meshes for your set design if you don't have access to set pieces like that, even though in Unreal there's several static meshes that come with it and they came with it in UDK that you can use as set pieces. And if your map is awesome at that point, then you're in really good shape. If it's not, then you need to go back and think about what's wrong with it, like why is it not fun? What needs to be changed? Can we change it? Things like that. Again, to reiterate, it's all based on what feels good for the player. Because it's real simple, real easy at this stage. The ease with which you can edit the BSP inside of Unreal makes it really easy to make super quick edits and make sure things are all right. At this point, I'm adding this uh, tiny little platform because I can't extend the main upper level all the way back because of where the staircases are placed. And we're getting towards the point where I double the size of that platform after I block out the walls. I think is at this point, I start kind of thinking about and realizing that I'm pretty sure the kind of exoskeleton of our level that hollowed out box or cube is going to have to be bigger, but I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it quite yet because I start running out of room, but I'm play testing in the editor and running around the scale and the size. It feels pretty good to be honest, but it'll have to depend on 
how it feels when there's items placed around for optimal movement and spacing. So everything's not just like mashed up on top of each other because of how we build out the upper level and the sub flooring of the main level it makes that main room for this part feel kind of small and i haven't quite decided yet if i if i really think that the room is too small or if it feels good being that small So again, more play testing because as I moved out, the BSP created this kind of hole where the innermost staircase is. And then just seeing if, if that feels good, if you can still traverse up that staircase. Because it's kind of cool that you can drop down in there. But after a while and more edits, I get rid of that, as you'll see in a few minutes. At this point... I duplicated the top platform in order to just double it in size. And I could have just extended out the with the Y axis and then just doubled that. But at the time I didn't feel like I didn't feel like moving the platform again. So I just duplicated it and shifted it down. And I was trying the weld tool in the BSP geometry editor mode. And it didn't work quite like how I expected it to. I could try and do it similar to how 3ds Max does it, where you select the vertex and then click on weld and then click the point where you want it to weld to. But I highlighted those four corners and it <laughs> did this weird welding point where it just welded the points that are vertical to each other together is weird. So I just had it, I just created a new <laughs> platform for the upper level, which I was trying to avoid because I was trying to be lazy. But well, it's fine. And if you're having trouble starting with you, your own geometry, like where to start, like where to start from your paper map, I, I started out on this gray boxing episode feeling like that but it might not come across because uh, i have the the footage sped up since this is a couple hours of work and i don't want you sitting here forever but i was taking a look at the different sections of our paper map and thinking about what's what's the vocal point where did i actually start when i created the paper map because it's a logical place to start with your gray boxing and you could possibly think about what's going to be easiest so that's why I went with the far left room. And now we have built in our subtractive geometry. And when you're creating a subtractive geometry, like, like what I did, how I just wanted a hole in the floor, what I did to the Z specifically, the height of that subtractive box, I made it the exact height of that top panel, which I believe is 50. Yeah, it has a Z height of 50. So I made it 50. And as you can tell, it cut out a perfect chunk of the floor. So it's gone, quote unquote. What you can do is you can make the Z height larger than what you want the hole to be, which is totally fine. I just did it because it works when it's the exact same height and the exact same dimensions. Because if I had a hole that needed to be out of like the X or the Y axis, it'd be the same thing. And the reason why I do it 
is just in case I place other pieces of geometry into the level and they need to be tied up against subtractive geometry, I want to save that space instead of having <laughs> holes cut out of other things. Right here, this is what I was talking about with, I started editing things between our gray box, like actual in-engine map and the paper map. Because in the paper map, I didn't have this blocked off, but it, it looked really bad in the level editor. I could have just shortened the little L wall and I just brought that up so it wasn't on the main floor. But I decided to fill in those back areas instead just to close off some of those so people aren't running back into there for no reason and it's mainly just to kind of hide the the back of the staircases because they don't really look very good when they're when they don't have any texture on them because like they don't exactly look like real staircases what i might do later is change it because i put in huge blocks to block that off i might just make thin kind of walled off sections because what happens over on this side that's currently built is that it creates a seam and on that seam near the bottom of where those two giant blocks hit each other where the L wall is you can see through it for some reason and UDK had the same problem too and you can check out some uh, games that were made in Unreal that do that for instance I've been let's play in the evil within and I, I've run into that a couple times where you can just you can see through the geometry at certain angles for whatever reason. And if you know the answer, I'd love to know why why that happens sometimes. For this, I am probably going to just put static meshes, which are 3D models if you don't know. Anyways, I, I'll probably just put set pieces, those 3D models, the static meshes in that corner where that seam is just to block it off. Because I try fixing it a couple different ways and it just it didn't go away. So that's how I'm going to deal with it, is just play static meshes in it, because it's not too bad. I've made levels in the past in UDK where it was like an entire wall from the floor to the ceiling of the level, and that was a huge pain in the butt to try and fix. I had to Frankenstein a bunch of BSP all over the place to fix it. So to give you some ideas on bad things will happen, it's just like programming. You fix something, something else will break. <laughs> Now as we get towards the end of the episode here, you can see I'm building out a geometry that's not a cube, finally. And it's these pillars are going to be our dividing points. That'll be on the edge of the top level and the main level. To add some geometric flair, you can use the different BSP brushes. So in this case, I use the cylindrical BSP brush. And when you start out, it'll create an octagon shape and if you want more points so it's more rounded you can increase the number of points on it over in the brush details but for now i'm just going to leave it with eight points and i might increase it later but for now it's going to leave it as when we come back in the next episode and you'll see i'll have built out some more geometric flair in the level and all i'm going to do for that is put in more additive bsp brushes and angle them so There'll be a lot you can do with the BSP, and that's an example of it. So you don't have to have 3D models to create like angled walls. You can do that with the BSP, and you'll see that next time. And then as of right now in the video, I'm just copying and pasting 
or duplicating and then I rotate it by switching to the rotational tool as opposed to the move tool and uh, do that quickly you just push the space bar and then you can rotate objects on and the reason why I'm copying and pasting or duplicating is just so both sides of the map since they're symmetrical they end up being symmetrical instead of having to build out all the geometry again you can just duplicate it it makes it really easy and it's a nice feature especially within unreal and it's just to even out everything however i do run into some problems because the staircases when you move when you rotate them 180 degrees it doesn't line up right on the grid so i have to do finagling with that in the details but it's not a huge deal if you run into it too for the most part everything to line up, especially if you just do a straight duplication and move it, as opposed to altering its rotation. You'll also notice that through the majority of this gray boxing session, I've been working inside of the wireframe views, which are those top left, top right, and bottom right viewfinders inside of the editor. And that's just because it's a lot easier to line up your edges of your BSP when you're working inside of the wireframe mode. And the first time you're using it, and if especially if you look at a completed level, it can be really overwhelming because the wireframes will overlap all over the place depending on the wireframe view you're looking through. And don't shy away from using it. The more you use it, the way more you get used to it. And it's extremely helpful for level designing because if you just use the perspective viewport, well, it's nice because it shows you a real-time 3D representation of what your level looks like. It's a lot harder to line things up, but if you find it easier and you work best that way, then go for it. For those of you who are new and those of you who can't perfectly line things up, especially when you're looking at it from an angle, I would suggest using the wireframe views. It's just a lot easier to work with. Now that's left to do is play test the level a little bit. And I'm going to leave it here because we built out most of this main area right here. And when we come back, I'll have the rest of the geometry finished because I don't want to have to make use of three thing. Hopefully this covered enough so that you can gray box inside of Unreal. And if you found this helpful, please leave a like and or subscribe. And if you didn't find it helpful, then I'm sorry that I'm not covering super expert topics because you already know what to do in Unreal. So do it! If you have suggestions, I'd love to hear them because this is our level, even though it's really mine. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.